Hey, have you ever seen the movie The Running Man? No, man. All right, we are live. All right, I'll be right back. I just got to take a leak.
everybody. Welcome back to Forever Conscious Research Channel. Hope you all find yourself doing well this Sunday. Good to see you. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but um, OBS just updated and it seems that the chat is also not carrying over as well. So um, the on-screen chat that's normally there, unfortunately, um, is missing. So uh, if you're watching the replay elsewhere, uh, the only way you'll probably be able to see the chat uh, later is by watching it on YouTube with the live chat module that they have, unless for some reason it decides to start working again. So, okay. So now that that's out of the way, I would like to welcome back Dan from the Overwatch channel, overwatchproject.com. And you can find those links, <coughs> excuse me, to his channel in the description tab. And Dan, it's great to have you back. Today we're going to be diving into, uh, you know, some helpful tips for day-to-day -day existence uh, and exiting the matrix, possible afterlife solutions, and then astral realm research. So great to have you with us, brother. Hey, thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me back. Of course. It's an honor. <laughs> So, so uh, mm -hmm. everything's working now, the audio. Yeah, audio there. seems fine. It's just um, the chat is giving us issues, but that's all right. Um, that's not a big deal. The, the live chat on YouTube works, so that's all that matters. So, okay, yeah. great. So uh, what do you want to dive into first? Thinking maybe uh, maybe like day-to-day -day stuff or? Well, you know, I just uh, wanted to briefly mention last night I watched the uh, old movie from the 80s. Uh, called The Running Man, mm -hmm. uh, which is an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, what was weird is uh, how much in that movie <laughs> is kind of like ha happening, you know, today, like the stuff they predicted. Really? Uh, yeah, because um, it's, a, it's a dystopian sci-fi movie. And it's supposed to take place in the year 2017. And uh, it's got a, you know, a quite dystopian view of the future. Mm -hmm. And, but the, and some of the technology they show in the movie, of course, they did it with that, you know, as best they could do in the 80s. But mm -hmm. they, they actually showed uh, deep fake oh, technology, really? making, uh, making a video that is completely fake. Uh -huh. wow. yeah. you know um but it, you know it was just interesting to watch i just thought i'd mention it in case anybody out there might want to check it out yeah, it's definitely. actually yeah still watchable today cool. but yeah i thought maybe we could talk about um you know some positive things uh yes. what to do in the afterlife um what uh because uh, you know i mean if you it's unbelievable to me but the world just seems to exponentially get crazier uh it doesn't seem to have any limits on the uh, <laughs> uh in insane stuff that you see other people do or how uh, the level of delusion some people around you can be in it's uh, uh you know it's just a it's just that it's, yeah, it has no limits <laughs> like they people can literally make themselves believe anything they want without basing it on any kind of um, verifiable research or evidence or yeah, it's just really weird how it the is. level that people can can go to. It um, is. I mean, it's <clears throat> crazy. It's it's a nut house out there. <laughs> right, and then you have to wonder uh, what you mentioned, which it's something that you got me thinking about. Listening to a couple other people, um, there was that new channel you pointed me to, uh, Quantum. Um, Oh, was it again? Oh Quantum? yeah. Um, hold on. Uh, With the two oh, yeah, Quantum, yeah. They're incredible. Uh, let me um, let me give them a shout out. I actually had a conversation with them. I, I'm horrible with the names, but I will get that for you. Uh, Quantum Quantum Healing with Tina and Karen. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I've been I was I've been watching their videos. Wow, these two uh, young people. Um, 
uh, way ahead of the curve uh, for their age, especially. I mean, oh, yeah. I, back when I was their age, I, I wasn't anywhere near <laughs> uh, the level that they are at. Um, mm-hmm. And um, it's interesting that you know they they uh, they seem to have come to all the same conclusions all on their own. Uh, I really did like uh, I forget which uh, I think it was. Karen, mm-hmm. she uh, was talking about uh, very similar to some of the things you mentioned, where you you may not be able to trust your family members and loved ones when you get to the afterlife because mm-hmm. they're you know if they're in the matrix or they're part of the of the uh, reincarnation system here mm-hmm. that uh, they're basically like a cult mind you know I think of it as like a, being a cult uh, and they, they will suck you in and she she made some comment in the end of one of her videos and. Uh, about, you know, pulling out her sword, taking one of them hostage and going, okay, where's the exit? Where is the exit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great. That was great when she said that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and I think uh, it, it, uh, it shows an understanding that they have that uh, you can, uh, you know, when, when you're, when you're out of the um, avatar here that you're occupying in this uh, holographic reality, uh, you, um, you can generate, things, your appearance, uh, the clothing you're, you're wearing, if you're, you know, or, or if you want to just appear as a being of light or whatever you want to appear as, or whatever, um, tools or materials that you, you could just conjure that all up. So I understand what she's saying, you know, pull out her sword and, uh, use it, uh, like that. That's, that's sure. pretty creative. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And yeah, they're, they're, uh, incredible. Um, they're, they're going to come on for a talk at some point. I mentioned that to you and, uh, it's going to be interesting. They've, they've had 500 cases of, uh, past life combined past life regression and, um, spirit reversal retreat spirit. I forgot what RTR RTS, uh, I should have remembered that off. Uh, I want to make sure. Oh yeah. Uh, spirit release practitioner. Um, so that's, that's what they do. They, and what's interesting is they, they were working on, um, past life regressions. And then they also were doing the spirit release to help people with trauma and things like that. And that's how they really started to question things because they kept seeing all this crazy evil shit. Um, and then all the regressions were showing, you know, lifetime after lifetime of trauma, of you know quote unquote lessons that are supposed to be learned uh and they were just like why is it all like this and they kept questioning and questioning and uh bless them i mean it's it's awesome to to see what they're doing and i really look forward to to working with them more and uh well you know we'll probably all have a conversation together at some point too dan that would be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See that the thing is that they, they're like mediums, right? Mm-hmm. Aren't they? Or one of them or the both of one, them. Are kind one of, of them, I think is. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. So they already, you know, one of them has like a foothold into mm-hmm. the afterlife or the astral anyway. And I think that may have helped, but yeah, how many people have written books uh, about reincarnation have studied or dealt with regressions with, hundreds if not thousands of people mm-hmm. and never come to the, con- the obvious conclusion that these two came up with. It's how can you, how do they look at thousands of reincarnations in a person's life? You know, in a per- one person, one, mm-hmm. one being reincarnating here hundreds or thousands of times to learn some stupid lesson mm-hmm. that they never can seem to learn or um, just, the nonsense, it's just total nonsense. But these two mm-hmm. saw through it somehow. They, mm-hmm. they finally realized, wait, you know, why do you have to learn through suffering? How can you learn mm-hmm. anything with amnesia? Yeah, and exactly. And and they were also talking about how they, they always had like a, a sovereign mindset, sovereign direction. Like, now mind you, <clears> you know, they'll, they freely admit, and this would be a natural progression that, you know, they they took the classes and, and, and learned the techniques um, you know, like from Dolores Cannon and all that, you know, for uh, regressions, oh. et cetera. But, you know, they're, they're learning that you, you it's it's crazy because that material is specifically uh, designed to, yes, uh, have the practitioners and the client be able to find answers or at least 
supposed answers and depends on, I guess, how many could be implants, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, <clears throat> but there's consistency there. So that's, that, that helps a lot, the, the patterns and the consistency, but you know, they said like they had this sovereign mindset and intention from the beginning. And they said, if they, they said they saw that it could have been very easy for them to be manipulated by, you know, quote unquote spirit guides or whatever, you know, uh, in their practice, but they never really started in that direction. You know what I'm saying? They were always kind of on that sovereign, uh, mindset, which I think is everything because, uh, what we see with these regression therapists all the time, they're clearly being manipulated by entities. I mean, it, it, Newton admits it freely. Uh, Weiss admitted it, you know, that they're, they're interacting with entities. Okay. I like to just call it flat out what it is, manipulation, deception. But um, I think that's like one of the big problems right there is that people can't see it because they're being quote guided by these entities, you know, to, to, to kind of, and they have like a, a foot in the door in all sessions, I guess, or many sessions or, you know, in the mind of the practitioner. So it's, it's a, it's a total mess what's going on out there. Yes. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. in the last video uh, or interview that I did with you, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until the end that, you know, I mentioned that mm -hmm. pretty deeply, but now that, you know, maybe people didn't get to that far in the interview last time, but you know, so yeah, I want to say up front, some your individuality. That's what I was talking about. The key, uh, to exiting the matrix here is to embrace your individuality that you are not one with everything else that you are a separate individual self-contained conscious entity and that you network or you can interconnect with everything mm -hmm. around you which i i think uh to, the way i look at it and the way i explained it last time is that people confuse this interconnection or the ability to um you telepathically or um, through non-physical means, because the spirit is obviously uh, very powerful, uh, be able to, you know, examine something and understand everything about it. So it makes it feel like you're one with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that, that, that oneness thing that gets peddled around <laughs> and it's, it's quite obvious to me that this world the way it's designed, the way the human being is designed, it's intentionally designed to try to rob you of your individuality as yes. much as possible. It wants you to surrender it to group mind, to some, some kind of, of group think. And, um, if you, you can just work at, you know, I, I understand you have to work with groups. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to work with other people. Like I'm working with you right now, mm -hmm. but I have no delusion that me and you are somehow the same. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we're not the same. No. We have different ideas. And, uh, we have uh, similar ideas, but we have, so I can, I can part, you know, I can temporarily, we can share and, and communicate and, and uh, help each other out. Yeah. We but, can agree and disagree. You know, yeah, we can agree and disagree. <laughs> I mean, exactly. So it would make us not one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're not one. But we, you know, but to me, like I, I, I don't know if anybody stuck around last time. The way I looked at it was, uh, a computer is a standalone entity, and uh, when oh, it gets like into this. a network, yeah. yeah, and it's in a network, it becomes almost like it's one with, uh, with uh, every other computer. Um, and you know, when you hook your computer onto the internet, you have this vast connection with everything, mm. but your computer can easily be unplugged from that. And it's still there. It's still there all by itself. And, and, and we have closed networks and open networks. And, uh, I think reality may work something similar to that where you, you connect, uh, on earth as a human being, you connect, um, with the limited, communication mm -hmm. and uh, mind, you know, interaction that we have here as humans. Uh, but in the astral plane that, that it gets super expanded to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. And 
but still, uh, like I am yeah, starting to agree with you that the immediate astral planes uh, connected to earth and to the material plane here, that they're all, they are all an extension of the matrix. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. Um, yeah. It took uh, me a while to get my head around that one yeah. because I'm like, well, how can, but then again, you know, people don't seem to have a problem understanding that there's good and evil <laughs> spirits. So if there's good and evil in the spirit realm and there's good and evil on earth, um, then, uh, why would, why would the spirit realm be uh, the, at least yeah. immediate, mm -hmm. a, the immediate astral connected to earth mm -hmm. would be somehow also like a place where you think you got out, but you haven't really got out yet. Yeah. You, you may... That's, that's, that's the, that's the big one, man. That's uh, the way, I, the way I kind of always phrase it is like, why take any risk at all? You know, there, there's no need to rush to any judgment or decision. I think as long as we're just kind of in our, at least in my opinion, in our own realm, own creation, own, everything is us by our, by our rules and intention that we should be okay. And then I think, you know, these, these memories are just going to flood in. We're going to have this recall and we're like, oh, okay, that's what I did. That's how I fucked up and got Aaron, you know, and then we'll Ooh. just, I mean, where we go from there, who knows? I mean, there's no way to know. All we know is that, you know, the, the safest route possible is, in my opinion, the only yeah, way. Yeah. I mean, just to, you know, help ourselves. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was both Robert Monroe and even in Newton's books that the, the, uh, um, Robert Monroe, I think if I remember right, he wrote about a boundary area. Mm-hmm where um you know like spirits or or people that had or beings that had been reincarnating on earth weren't coming back and they were shimmering with a very high energy uh and uh, but he couldn't see where they were going and, mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure that was in either his book and i think michael newton may have written yeah about that also. um i think he, uh william bowman Bullman, uh, was it, was it touched I on getting, it too. Yeah. There's some, I mean, I, something. I want to say, yeah, I could be wrong about who said it eh, or what, what source it came from, <laughs> but, uh, I remember reading, uh, it from a couple of different sources. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a boundary area, a mm -hmm. uh, point of no return where, where, um, spirits were choosing to leave mm -hmm. and, uh, and not return to earth for reincarnation and wherever they were going. Uh, was unknown. Yeah, it was and I, beyond. And, mm, yeah, yeah. And, go ahead. And I think they represent it. Um, it, it, it's it's tough to say, but I think they also represent it loosely in uh, that ridiculous movie Sausage Party, and um, and even maybe Soul. Even though, like, they're going towards the light and the and or talking about going towards the light they uh there's certain terms that they use that imply that there's something beyond that but you know we're not allowed to know um i don't know i don't know but you know that they, they like to mix things up too so of course that whole thing and which my first assumption would be that, you know, that's just part of the matrix construct and trap, but, you know, uh, we just, we've, we've got a blackout in terms of, you know, anything beyond that point, should it exist in the way we're, we're talking now, you know? Sure. Yeah. So like, for example, how does somebody get into this crazy game of life <laughs> anyway? So I think it's, you know, like uh, you're an immortal conscious entity and, and you, you might exist in a state of kind of naiveness. If you've never experienced, uh, you've never experienced anything like earth life as a human and you are existing in a, uh, state of per perhaps, uh, peace and, um, and even though you may have access to everything, you may not even seek out information because you're, you're kind of like in a naive, almost childlike existence and you're immortal. There's no threats. There's no, you know, it's, it, it may even get kind of boring. And then you, you uh, may get lured 
uh, you know, to the, uh, what uh, Monroe described as the mental, the M band noise, the mental noise of earth. And then you're observing or you get, you can't, you don't understand you're naive and you don't understand exactly. And of course they get you to agree to like a, there's always like a gatekeeper described in a lot of these different books from a lot of these different people. And you go back to the 1920s uh, and read uh, books about the astral plane uh, and uh, reincarnation and you Mm -hmm. can find very similar information. And and then you can even, you know, go further back and possibly even uh, uh, people like Plato were trying to, Yes. Uh, talk about it yes. with his uh, cave, cave, with his cave metaphor, yeah. right? Oh. And and so you're you're kind of lured into this uh, uh, game. Uh, just agree to the terms of service. Uh, it'll be an experience that you've never had before, and you'll be, you'll be able to forget who you are now and play as this other character. <laughs> and then you uh, end up here, and then the system has you, and it's probably for some nefarious purpose like yeah. uh, containing spirits for like a, almost like a farming operation for negative energy and, and yeah. so that these psychopathic archontic parasites can uh feed or harvest uh what we're putting out there mm-hmm. in the chaos down here and, yeah. and in return they're telling you that they're giving you this exciting experience yeah, and you gotta, you know, you gotta learn. You gotta grow spiritually, and you know, and blah 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 blah. All the stuff we hear. Yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm convinced that the whole loose thing is accurate, at least to some extent. Um, you know, whether we can say it's how Monroe described. I mean, we, there's just seems like there's so much in our face about it. Even even the Matrix. You know, I mean, it's. All this stuff seems just our very existence. Um, it just seems to really fit well. Um, yeah. Wait, you um, know, when you look at reality that way, um, you know, that, that's how my journey began. I was trying to figure out a way to, to understand it without any conflicts. If, 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 you're, if you're trying to massage away conflicts, you got to use cognitive dissonance to uh, explain away, or sometimes you, you, you'd have to even get angry, right? How many uh, people stuck in a, some kind of religious belief actually get quite upset or are materialists get quite agitated and upset when they mm-hmm. can't explain away certain <laughs> yeah. things and they become uh, rude and nasty, nasty. and, uh, yeah, and, and, and hostile, right? Yeah. But if you're actually looking for the truth, you've got to get to a, a, some kind of model of reality that has uh you, there's no conflict it's like okay well everything in this model and i have very I, you know i don't just have one theory i have several different theories that all fit the information i don't know which one is completely accurate uh, but uh generally you know the core elements are this is a, a loose farm a reincarnation soul trap uh the only way to win this game is to get out that's when you win the game. You get out of the game. You, you stop playing the game and you, you break free. Um, and, and the only way to do that, uh, following the, the logic of how all the, the rules here work and what they're trying to condition you into is to do the exact opposite. So you don't want to be group minded. You want to be completely individualized. You don't want to, you don't want to get caught in, uh, um, this mind, uh, the wrong mindset and, and, and mindset is everything. If you have the right mindset, you're already like almost out of here. It's just uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of that has to do with it. They'll tell you that in self-defense. If you're taking, um, if you're, if you're studying martial arts, um, mindset is everything. If you have a, if you, if you enter a, a, a battle, uh, with something with someone and, uh, you have the m- mindset that you're going to lose, you have already lost. Yeah. You know? It makes sense. And, and uh, yeah, mindset is absolutely crucial. That's why, like when I see some of these comments once in a while, like, Oh, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. No, don't worry. Just, you know, you are more powerful than you can imagine. Just, you know, get that mindset and that daily 
thinking that you are going to free yourself no matter what. You are free. You are a sovereign being, you know, just put that intention out there. Every single, I mean, for me, it's like, it's not, an, I don't even, I don't even, it's just automatic now for me. It's not even, I don't even, it just is what it is. Like, period, nothing is allowed to interfere with me. This is it. It's It's over. Once my natural death occurs, that's it. You know, nothing, exactly. nothing is going to mess with me, period. I win. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, um, there's a difference in, when you're in the human form, of course, and I think it's done intentionally. The model of the human being is that it needs uh, so many different things to sustain itself. Uh, you're biologically programmed to, um, you know, seek certain things out, yes. you have certain needs. Doubt this yourself. requires you... Yeah, this requires you to uh, sort of embrace the group uh, mentality because alone it's a lot harder, which I think is all done on purpose. Yeah. And then um, the um, uh, so you have to remember that in the human form, you are going to be coerced against your will to do things that you don't want to do simply because it's the strategic or the tactical thing to do to survive. Yeah, on earth. But once you get out of here, those limitations are gone. They want you to, they want that can beat that into you because when you, when you leave the body after the, after the life is over here, and it's only a very short time in, in, you know, immortality time. So you're only here for a short time. The, the trick is you get out of here and then they somehow maybe, to give you a break in between, but you, you, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll end up back here for another lifetime. So the trick is, um, to not uh, carry that human baggage mm -hmm. with you, um, to instantly understand that once you are released from the body, those rules don't ap apply anymore. Um, you don't need machinery, uh, to travel. You don't need, um, food that has to be, uh, you know, uh, prepared, uh, to properly for you to survive. You don't need air to breathe. You don't, you don't need anything like that. You are a self-sustaining unit of consciousness and you can immediately assert your, uh, sovereignty or individual supremacy. And then you go wherever you want. And I, I don't agree with a lot of the other stuff. They always, these new age people, the, mm. A lot of the religions, they all package the same information, even the materialists uh, of like, you have to control your emotions. Uh, anger is bad. Well, un unjustifiable anger, I think is bad. Righteous anger is good. Yes. Um, um, negative energy and positive energy, it comes from us naturally. Uh, and uh, it's not always evil. If you are projecting, um, negativity uh let's say uh you're you know it's just you a human example you're uh, walking down the street and uh somebody comes out to rob you they're threatening your life and um they are uh you know threatening you with violence they've initiated the violence you haven't done that so now you you're perfectly righteous to um defend yourself by returning superior violence yes. upon them uh, even to the point where you, you're going to destroy their lives or whatever, or take their life. As long as uh, you're doing it, that is a very negative act. You may even get angry while you're doing it, but you're, it's a justifiable act. So you didn't initiate the, the evil uh, you're responding to it. Um, and so same thing when these entities show up in the afterlife and now you're confronted with a bunch of bullshit artists, as far as I'm concerned, you know, oh, the angel of light, uh, my spirit guide. Uh, <laughs> you give them the uh, spiritual middle finger. You All tell right. them to go fuck themselves. You'll find your own way. Thanks. And you get out of here. <laughs> Damn right, brother. Damn <laughs> so, right. Fuck spirit yeah. guides. No, I don't People need no spirit thanks. guides. Yeah. Jeez. If I, if I, who knows how many times I've been here? Who knows how many times you've been here? Mm. Uh, constantly recycled <sighs> in this uh insane world ruled by insane people um it's, it's insane you know, I, I think it, 
Yeah, it is. It is like an insane thought. Some of the stuff that goes on here is is my when you take a look at it, when you honestly look at it, when you honestly and then when you look at what people tolerate oh. and um the the demon support, you know, and then you look at what's going on here, you're like, wow, wow. And you know, it's they, incredible. It's like, <laughs> it's, it really it's is incredible. incredible. It's incredible. And, and you know, when you bring it up to people, um uh, co-workers and things when you, when, when you're interacting with, uh, I, you know, certain people that you're maybe, maybe, maybe it comes up. It doesn't have to be anybody close to you, but like even a, a stranger or a casual acquaintance and you point out the insanity to them, they will not re- say you're wrong. <laughs> no, they kind of like shrug their shoulders and they're like, yeah, you know, but it's kind of like, mm. well, that's just the way it is. Mm. Well, it's only the way it is because all you dumb fucks oh, wow. are keep tolerating, yeah. right? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're people like me are totally outnumbered by you idiots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, yeah. you know, so this, place, yeah. this place is not fixable. I don't think it's fixable. There's a lot of people out there trying to fix it, but I think the system has a way of, you know, when that movement gets too big, it's, it's, it's squashed down. Yeah, no, reset. yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. I convinced of that. Um, it, why wouldn't they? I mean, really, just we know all this other stuff. We know why. Why would they leave a hole like that open? You know, something that easy. You know, no, they're gonna they're gonna do what they need to do either by squashing, like you said, whoever is causing the issue. If it's just kind of isolated or kind of uh, minorly spread out. And, but then if it's like something realm wide or, or regional, then yeah, hit the reset button, boom. All right, and what happens? They all, everyone dies, and they go through the freaking whole process again. They go to the light, get their memory zap, go to the life review, all, all this stuff. And then they're sent back down here. Oh, as if nothing ever happened. Oh, how convenient. Sure, sure, I, hmm. I've brought this up before. How do we know? I, it, it, assuming okay, the material realm is really not material, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a holographic, holographic existence, right? Holographic is the best way to describe it. That's even in the declassified CIA Stargate uh, papers, right? It's, Gate, gateway uh, experience, I think, was the gateway. Paper. Yes, yeah. the gateway, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a, a you know, and even a lot of popular. Uh, models of reality include this holographic principle. The table isn't really solid. There's mm-hmm. just like a rule there that makes it solid. So when you bang on the table, it's solid. Right? It's the same thing in a video game. Video games use the exact same thing. Everything is programmed. There's parameters, limitations, rules. And what happens if somebody figures out something in a video game to get advantage in, in it? They patch it and they remove the advantage. Right, that's the whole. They, that happens all the time in games. Right, they patch the game. There's updates to the game, and sometimes they just shit can the whole game and just start over with a whole new game. Um, so we have all this stuff here on Earth that distracts us, gets our attention. I mean, I'm not saying that like ancient history never actually happened, but when you're playing like Tomb Raider, okay, from 2018 on your PlayStation, let's just use that as an example. And you're in an ancient tomb uh, or an ancient um, area with all these ancient relics and ruins. Uh, they're ancient in the game, right? Mm-hmm. But really, the game was what programmed and built in like 2016, and then it rolls out mm-hmm. in the PlayStation 2018. The ruins are not really old; <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just they're placed there as old. I mean, yeah. how do you know? Perceived the, old, yeah. Yeah, they're 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 in the program. They're in the hologram mm-hmm. in the in the game as old. I mean, I know that's kind of deep and no, no. But um, I've talked about it too, a, man. I'm with you. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, we you just don't know where the you know where the uh, fiction ends and where where the reality begins. Exactly, uh, it could that, all just be background. We we don't freaking know. We have no clue. No, we don't know. Yeah, and I'm not saying anything. It's definitely this yeah. it's definitely that i don't know for sure i just know could be this could be that yeah. but i do know that the totality of the evidence shows me 
this is a BS existence, <laughs> a BS reality, and and I have the power to get out of here because Damn, all right. the all the tricks that they use give away all the clues as to the weakness of this matrix. The weakness of it is that when you when you die, if you carry your human baggage with you, you are going to be susceptible to be trapped here, no doubt. Yep. When you die and you say, well, okay, that was my human existence. The last time I'm reasserting my full potential and I'm, you know, nothing can stop me. Yeah. Damn right, brother. Right? right? Love, right? It. So, Love it. Love um, it. In complete agreement. I mean, yeah. all this place has is, talk about it all the time. All it has is deception, manipulation, and illusions. That's it. That's all it runs on. Once you get to the core of that, then you realize how powerless this place really is. I mean, it's all held together by fucking illusions. And it deception. Um, That's it. The whole world is constantly uh, in your face with um, its inherent weakness, yep. pretending to be indestructible. Mm -hmm. Even our whole system of societal control, you have very few people controlling a gigantic, massive population. And if, if everybody just understood their own basic human uh, rights, mm -hmm. we could just ignore the system. It would literally collapse on itself. Yep. So it, it, you wouldn't even have to do anything crazy. You just, okay, yeah, we're, we're just not listening to that crap anymore. Eh, done. Uh, eh. the, system, the system would literally vaporize. It wouldn't have any power. It couldn't, it, there's no way. They don't have enough people to, you know, I think uh, there's a great animated video on, I, I believe it's still on YouTube, and you can probably find it on Odyssey and BitChute, called The Tiny Dot. And if you ever watch the tiny dot, you'll see how ridiculous the system of control is and how inherently powerless it is. And it's only because you granted power that it has this power over mm. you. Um, and um, it's same thing in the afterlife. I mean, uh, how, how powerful could these archontic beings really be if they have to continuously deceive you with the, lies and uh and use all these tricks to get you to agree to amnesia and uh and put you into a, a real frail human existence and meant to have the cycle repeat over and over again and to tell you that oh you have to learn this or you have to learn that uh or you only you only tried to learn this for a thousand lifetimes next time uh. we'll get it uh, <laughs> there was that there was that one uh case in newton's um uh, what was it? Journey of Souls. And the person worked... Okay, it's e either one of the two is f wretched. Okay, but it's... he. The person either worked five... Or the spirit soul worked either 5,000 lifetimes or 5,000 years just on empathy, Dan. Just on See? empathy. Well, if, that's freaking damn. insane. Insane. That's insane. 5,000 <laughs> lifetimes. If you can't get that in one lifetime, there's something seriously wrong Something's with you. It's wrong. But, but 5,000, that's, <laughs> see, that, that's how ridiculous the system is. That just shows you how ridiculous it is. It's just absolutely insane and ridiculous. Oh, God. But, um, <laughs> just real quick, I don't know if you're sure. aware of this, but you know, when you're typing, like I, I type to get to your channel faster. I, when I'm on YouTube, I'll just start typing forever conscious mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. Do you know that your channel does not automatically show up? I have to hit the enter key. Oh, well, that makes sense, I guess. Wait, uh, it, it doesn't, should show up. It doesn't like, like, if, uh, it, like in the... Like nope, this. It, it once, nope, as soon as okay. I type in forever... Mm -hmm. When I type in forever, it starts showing me all these channels with forever. Mm -hmm. When I start typing conscious, mm -hmm. it'll continue to show me a bunch of different channels. None mm -hmm. of them are yours. Then uh, when I get space R, 
there's nothing there. Nothing. And I have to type in research, enter, and then you come mm. up. Isn't that weird? Nah. Doesn't surprise no. me, I guess. No, but, uh, no. <laughs> <Doesn't>. <laughs> no, no convenience uh, for, for finding uh, some truth once in a while. It's. Yeah. yeah, this 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 realm does not want uh, that information. No, to get into too many. I guess they can't stop it because mm -hmm. you know we do have free will. Yeah, even though it's stifled here on Earth mm -hmm. because you're now limited in this body, you have to make decisions based on your human existence. Mm -hmm. But uh, we still have the free will, so um, yeah. they, they they can't contain everything. No, it's they like can't. The, no, it's like Jurassic Park. Uh, <laughs> The, the those people that made in the first movie uh, back in the nineties, it was a classic uh, like subplot. Like the one guy was like, uh, "Well, we we sterilized them all; they can't reproduce." And then uh, I forget if it was Jeff Goldblum or one of the, he was like, "Well, you know, life will find a way to bypass your all your control. You think you can control everything, but you can't because you know you can't count very variable." And same thing here with the this matrix existence. The archons have thought of just, just about everything, but uh, they still can't contain consciousness because eventually, you know, some of us will just get out. Yeah. We just, we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll get out. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, they, they, you know, a system like this has to expect some sort of leak, uh, leakage of the, you know, the, the stone, uh, you know, the big truth. Like the soul trap and the the scam being run on us, but I think it has to once it reaches like a certain threshold, kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the reset possibilities or like highly likely scenario with that, then then it steps in and oh, yeah. has yep. to do something. So that it has to probably reach some marker that it doesn't like, <laughs> you know, and then boom, sure, yeah. you know. The Look at the Cathars, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. They had an entire, civil, an entire civilization of Gnostic, uh, from the Gnostic perspective, which is very similar to the whole reincarnation soul prep trap. They kind of understood that whole premise. They get to a very large level, right? Mil a million or more millions of people mm -hmm. in that system. They had their own cities. And then they were all slaughtered, cities burned to the ground, books destroyed, you know, talk about a reset there's your you know re today you have an increasing amount of individuality slowly taking hold in the midst of all this chaos where they're trying to really get you into uh collectivism mm -hmm. there's a there's a rising amount of true anarchism uh that has been spreading since the internet mm -hmm. has allowed all this information out mm -hmm. and that promotes total individuality Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you see how the system is trying to combat it by increasing collectivist and, you know, like almost like, uh, could you say like uh, um, dystopian type controls? Yeah, it's the, the collectiveness. And then it's also like that division, that hyper division of putting everybody, pinning everyone against each other, but still kind of funneling everybody back into the agenda that it wants or the agenda that it's you know the 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 grand funnel you have all the mini boxes and the di division points and then kind of everything funnels back to the system and it's like okay yeah you're still playing our game so we don't care how it happens but you know while you're at it hate everybody too you know <laughs> yeah don't get along yeah. oh <laughs> uh i'm just pr i'm been kind of scanning the uh comments here uh, D W H R G R T says, yeah, I get nightmares and anxiety. Don't, don't, uh, give into that. Um, you can practice lucid dreaming to control your dreams and turn them into whatever you want to, them to be. Um, you know, once you, you know, there, what there are certain exercises you can do to make sure you get into lucid states and dreaming like uh, during the day, you constantly, uh, every every now and then, several times a day, ask yourself if you're dreaming or you're awake. And then when it'll become like a subconscious habit. And when you're in a dream, you'll ask yourself that and you realize you're dreaming. 
and then you can start taking charge of your dream because lucid dreaming is, is very, uh, I think a, a small, uh, way to, you know, say the practice, what uh, you be able to do in the immediate afterlife and, you know, lucid dream, you can totally change the environment, banish anyone that's annoying you. You are, you can become a supreme being in a lucid dream. You can do whatever you want, go wherever you want, uh, create anything you want. So, um, you know, don't, uh, don't give into nightmares and anxiety. Uh, nightmare, you know, fear is, uh, is not good. Right. Right. Mark. hundred percent. It's a, it's the mind killer. And that's exactly what this whole system wants. It's, uh, the more it can feast on your fears and everything and anything and desires, uh, but it seems to really love that darkness, then um, they're winning. And uh, I, I think, again, it's, I think you gave uh, good advice with the, you know, the dream check throughout the day to subconsciously lodge that uh, in you and keep it fresh. And uh, also, um, you know, saying to yourself, doing things like positive affirmations, like, you know, I am, I am good. I am worthy. I am sovereign. I am, you know, I am, uh, you know, shielded, you know, uh, you know, all the uh, little things like that, that can, you know, try to, uh, positive affirmations really, when I, I was in the pits of hell, uh, at some points, on my journey and positive affirmations, they work, they work and they kind of help. Um, you know, if you, if you, you could, uh, start them like in the shower, you know, before you go to work or whatever you're doing and, uh, just, you know, 15, 20 minutes of a, of a good script, you know, make sure you listen to the script and that it's not gonna, you know, betray you. I mean, most positive affirmations are positive and good and they, they're good intentions, but sometimes the script isn't right. So feel it out, see if it's for you. And that kind of sets the tone for your day and your evening. So having that positive uh, mindset again is really, really important because uh, yeah. that means we're winning. Yes, yes. It's incredibly important to frame those type of messages that you're trying to put into yourself in the positive. A lot of people don't know the subtle way the subconscious processes their information. Um, mm. If you say something that in the negative, but it's positive, your subconscious mind tends to just interpret that in a negative way. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not like, um, I can now I can't think of an example. This is something I read even when I was little. I read this entire book, uh, which I no, no longer remember the author's name, but it was a self hypnosis, self improvement book, and it did help me a lot. But one of the things it told me in there is, you know, all suggestions have to be framed in the positive tense, and the English language is terrible. It's just a freaking mess. It's I think it's literally designed <laughs> it is. to yeah. to to hurt us mm -hmm. because they're everything we say is got multiple meanings. The subconscious mind doesn't process things in a linear logical way. Mm -hmm. And it's hearing all this language that is constantly being, uh, you, you know, you can use it like your body is made up of cells. When you go to jail, you go in a cell. <laughs> I mean, it's everywhere. It's grammar is the grimoire. Uh, we spell words, you cast spells, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's, it, it's, and then, um, the soul lured system, your soul is yeah, lured. Yeah, That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So yeah. that it, you, yeah. So soul, soul is a big one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're a soul person, but you have a soul. Uh, I mean, Wayne Bush, didn't he have, doesn't he have a whole section on his website with all the different. Oh, jargon yeah. oh and, he's got, yeah, yeah, he's got lots of stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't, I, you know, I'm having like a mental block here. I can't remember all this stuff, but it's very important to phrase things in the positive. One of the things in the, in that book was talking about, like, if you're going to do self hypnosis to like do quit a habit, like smoking or something, you want to make sure that 
it's not telling the subconscious to continue to smoke, even though you're saying don't smoke, you know, that doesn't, that's not framed in the positive. You want to, you want to say, uh, something that doesn't involve the action of smoking. Mm -hmm. So you want to say, I feel great because I, uh, um, breathe fresh air and all the time now. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, it's kind of like a sloppy example. But no, you know it's, no that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's uh, that intention and directive and, you know, standing firm is, is helpful. It's tremendously helpful, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you yeah, know, always do that. And mm -hmm. also, uh, yeah, you got to be aware the English language is just a nightmare. It's just a, <laughs> it is, it really is. Yeah, yeah, that, gotta, that's one yeah. that you can get, uh, you know, you can, I kind of lost it a little bit when I started going down that road. Cause you realize how set up we are with that. And it's, it can, I don't know. It messed me up a little bit for a while there. That was one of those areas like, oh, I should be talking like this. And then, you know, and then you're like, no, no, you just like, we, 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 you know, we've been set up with that link with the whole English language. And it's, it's something that will just really throw you for a loop. It is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if all languages do that, but I, I know that, I mean, the English one has to be the worst. Mm -hmm one where there's so many things that even sound alike, mm -hmm. like, uh, the, um, for some reason people are still obeying some Pope's orders from six or 700 years ago to tell people bless you after they sneeze. Mm -hmm. And which could, you know, some people have, have suggested that, that it's even possible that, uh, the subconscious mind is hearing be less you. You know, yeah, be less. yeah that's another one. Yeah. Sound, they oh. sound like that. You know, you, you, who knows? Yeah, be less. Uh -huh. Just be less. You <laughs> <laughs> be part of the group. Yeah, and then pray, pray. You know, you pray. Yeah, yeah, you know, pray, pray, pray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, prayed on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many of them. It's like endless when you look at it as a whole. It's like holy crap, who came up with this garbage language? Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, and then, um, the whole astral realm, uh, Mark, you've done a lot of research mm -hmm. into all these, uh, it, it's almost like it's, it's, even... you know, how about, um, how about we take, we're at an hour. How about we, we'll take five minutes and then we'll pick up and we'll, we'll go with astral in the next segment. Oh, okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. So yeah. we'll be back in about five minutes, my friends. Dan, take a break for a few, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Okay. All right.
Are we back on? All right, five seconds. Wow, you just got played. You got, what is that, a super chat or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. That's very kind. Yeah, Eleftheria, thank you so much, my friend, again, for your kind super chat. Donates 20 CHF. Hi, everybody. I love the way Dan thinks. Thank you, guys. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I love the way Dan thinks, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. I you know, it's, it's just one more thing about the English language. I really never quite feel comfortable when I'm trying to explain things to people because I don't ever think I say it well enough mm -hmm. or wow. get exactly out what I'm trying to convey. And, you know, um, wow. it's hard to communicate in English. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think you do a okay. damn good job, brother. You were pivotal in my journey. I try, but I never quite feel like I always think oh, I could have said that better. Every, every, there's not a video I've made where mm -hmm. I, at the end of it, I was like, well, that perfectly says what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I, I always feel like, damn it. It just sounds stupid now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all right, man. You, you're, you're great, wow. man. Keep, keep up the good work. Uh, by the way, Tina and Karen showed up in the chat to say, hello, lovelies. Thank you for the shout out. Oh, oh so yeah, they're here. your channel. You, yeah, it, it's amazing what you guys oh. are doing over there. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan already. Yeah, it's uh, I, I'm I'm loving it, <laughs> and I can't wait to <clears throat> to get dive deeper with them and and have some discussions. I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, pale yeah, horse rider. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, if you ever got, if you ever do like a group thing, yeah. uh, I'd love to be on with that. Yeah, let's let's questions. do it. Yeah. yeah, I'll talk to them and we'll we'll try and get something set up. Uh, pale horse rider for nine dollars ninety nine cents. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It's very kind of you, my friend. Uh, always appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so uh, we were going to dive into the astral realm next. So. Um, where are you thinking I had it with that one? <laughs> well, that I've always been fa see now I've always been fascinated when I started to learn more and more about it. Um, this astral realm, or you could say the immediate spirit worlds or the spiritual dimension that uh, mm -hmm. that you can go into from an out of body experience, or that you end up in in a near death experience, or the where you'll end up initially after your lifespan here is over mm -hmm. or um, the breakthrough trip reports sometimes too. Yeah. Like DMT yes. ayahuasca. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those. Uh, and of course DMT mm -hmm. being a, a way to, uh, you know, kind of like, um, force. Yeah. Or, uh, it's kind of like a cheat code. Yeah. It's almost like a cheat code in a video game. Just get, get DMT out. And then you, you <laughs> cheat coded yourself into the spirit realm. It's, <laughs> Um, I forgot if you before. I'm sorry. Did, did you ever try it? I don't remember us talking no, about that. I, yeah. I would like to, Same. but no, I have not. Yeah, I haven't no, either. I have not. Okay, I'm sorry. I would Continue. Like to. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so uh, there's just so much information about the spirit world out there, and once you once you filter out all the um, religious tard nonsense and. Uh, it, once you, uh, you know, know that the materialists have no clue, no clue, they're going to be the complete uh, victim when they get to the afterlife, I think, because they're just completely in denial about everything. I mean, most of their NDEs seem to be like, oh, I'm still here. How is that possible? You know, <laughs> spirits don't exist. <laughs> um, but the uh, astral realm is even more vast than the, the everything we can perceive in the material. It seems to be an, an, massive. An enormous, massive, yeah, yeah. with uh, almost like its own internal uh, multiverse uh, because mm -hmm. you have um, what I think was it William Bowman mm -hmm. that coined the phrase hollow heaven or was it somebody else? Uh... The, uh, the, uh, 
these faults or, or, you know, the, these environments. Mm. Uh, if you die and you're this religion, you end up in, you, you may I end up I think it might have some... been him. Might have been him. Yeah, I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but might have been him. So it's kind of like a honey pot too, you know, yes. where you, get, you can get, you can get lured into like a hollow a heaven of your religious fancy. And then you're there with a bunch of other people that thought the same thing. And uh, who knows how many, how much time you'll be, you'll spend there. It's kind of confusing because mm-hmm. time doesn't really even work there the same way as it works here in this, uh, really controlled linear way it works here. So, um, it's, it's hard for us in human form to even imagine a kind of like a nonlinear or kind of like, chaotic time flow where things don't necessarily work out from point A to point B directly yep. like it does here. So it's really hard because you can't even imagine. Um, it's hard to process but, it with this limited perception that we have. Yeah. And, uh. and there was uh, somebody um, yeah, which I'm not going to mention who, mm-hmm. but there was a, a, a somebody else on YouTube that I, for a while I was promoting. Ah, I know uh, who this is. Yes. Yeah, okay. you know who it is. Mm-hmm. And I have no. I, I mean, I I think that the entities, the con artists, have uh, you know lured him along, lured him along, and then just now he's hook, line, and sinker into. Uh, all this crazy stuff they mm. get people to believe, which you know, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, I, I, um, I was always questionable of him early on, but I, you know, you, the problem is you never know. You, 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 it's not like we can verify this damn thing. Um, but there, there were some weird things he mentioned. I remember mentioning something like hanging out with Lucille Ball and and. and I don't, I don't know. I mean, there was just, yeah, well, yeah uh, which, know. which, you know, yeah, sure. Then he wanted then, to fund the thing... his travels. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And then, but the thing is, uh, you know, I was still like, I wasn't really connecting the astral to the mate, to the, sure. like, the reincarnation soul sure. trap back then. Yeah. It was still like something I was having a hard time accepting that it's, it's going to take more. The exit isn't, the exit isn't there. Like you just go into the astral and you just never, you agree never to reincarnate again because you've seen, uh, even you did an analysis, right? A while ago, wasn't it, uh, some out of body guy talked into by entities to help oh, them, them, them talk uh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, to convincing someone who had no desire to reincarnate back on mm-hmm. to re- get him to reincarnate. Yeah. To go to back down to his daughter, who desperately needed him and he was supposed to be born in uh her body as a child as if she would ever freaking know that in the first place and uh you know he was supposedly at some cottage in the astral just wanting to be left alone minding his own business and then seven schmucks come and and they basically guilt trip him and and break his balls and basically call him a pussy you know, and yeah, and tell yeah. him, you know, get down here. I mean, that that's literally what he said. And I'm like, I mean, yeah. I don't even know the authenticity of that story, but if it's real, holy shit! I mean, you could you could imagine that's how it works too. I mean, it, it, to me, it, regardless of the authenticity of the story, it seems it seems like that would be something that would happen. Yeah, it does because. Mm. Um, how did they get me to reincarnate? Mm-hmm. I, I always wonder that, you know, I've, I told you about my possible flashback of one previous lifetime I had that came to me in kind of like a, uh, sort of like a, wasn't really a dream state, but I've told you the details. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and, um, the, um, you know, how did they get me after possibly, uh, 200 some years, to decide to come back here. I don't think I've been here in between. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, where was I, what was I doing? Minding my own business in the astral, I guess. Um, and you, and I think what happens is there is a detachment over time, even though time in the spirit realm may not work in a linear way. I think there's some kind of time. And then, um, where the longer you are away from being human, um, 
the more of an out as an outsider you see it. You don't mm -hmm. really um, make sense. You, you don't. Yeah, you don't really perceive the suffering, the yeah. negativity, the 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 dreariness, <laughs> the, the weight, the weight of hauling around the human body all mm -hmm. the time, being confined to it, and and having your brain, your consciousness processed through this highly limiting brain that we have. And, um, you know, cause like as a gamer, I, to me, it, it, this makes a lot of sense when yeah, I don't perceive my avatar in a video game suffering, right? No. You don't perceive it. No. You're kind of looking at it as an outsider. Yep. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's suffering, but it's not real. Yeah, right? You'll see and blood. It, you'll see, you know, someone getting paled or whatever, but you're not, you're not, you're not experiencing that. You just know it's happening. That's it. And you, yeah. disconnect you, you over it from it. Yes. Yeah. You, you intellectually understand the suffering, but you don't comprehend the magnitude of being involved in the inside of the body. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we play one of the most popular video games is call of duty. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is an endless, uh, literal, uh, to me, it's like kind of amazing, but they actually kind of created like the Viking he heaven of Valhalla, right? You get to mm -hmm. battle it out and then die over and over again and then rejoin the battle, you know, and, and it's kind of like that, right? But you know, nobody ever is playing Call of Duty and go, well, oh, that character I'm playing as, boy, they got killed all those times. It hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they just. <laughs> you just go right back to it, right? And your reincarnation is instantaneous. You just respawn, and then, there you go, in back in the battle. Um, so there's that. There is that detachment, right? You're not human, and if you're not human for a while, um, it might be easier and e get easier and easier over time. If you if you hang around the Earth astral to eventually get you back in there, even if you're really against. It. Even if you're really against it, I'm never going to go back. I had to suffer. My life was this, it was that. Uh, and then eventually they get you to reincarnate. So, um, And if the they have the disconnect with the memory wipe, like I think the... I think they can specifically... Because this is the weird part. Uh, this can get a little lengthy, but I'll cut it down as best I can. You have... So you reincarnate, and we know that phobias, certain traumatic uh, things that can trigger us are usually linked to a previous lifetime, and that carries over. So I... Yes. But what about all of the good? What, I mean, it's amazing how the traumatic and, and, and phobia aspect of things carries over, but what about all of this good what about the the good parts it's kind of like they specifically cut and paste certain attributes experiences lifetimes or experience in lifetimes that we have and make sure that the really shitty stuff is, is the stuff that sticks lifetime to lifetime so if even if there's this 200 year gap like like you had then they've kind of already clipped that out of you you know, they've already disconnected that out of you. So it's only a matter of time until they come to you and say, hey, you know, got to get down there, you know, get down there. We need you down there, you know, or, you know, something's going down there, you know, go and fight for it. You know, like we we're, you know, like your <laughs> your whole past, you know, past life thing. And like uh, how we were talking about the other night when, um, you know, that you feel that that's why you came here during this time. Yeah, if, to me, uh, if uh, um, for sure, it, it would it would it would have been the perfect lure. It would have been the one lure they could have used to get me back. Mm -hmm. it was basically going back to my last lifetime, what it was there for, and then to kind of like put that thought into my head that you know, and and. Um, the uh, the veil of forgetfulness, as you call it, mm -hmm. um, that's also yeah. You don't know. Is it? Do they use like a partial? If you hang around the astral long enough, do they make you forget the negative stuff on Earth? Yeah. 
so that you're more likely to come back? I think so. And and I think I think if they're like these astral realms that are obviously part of the matrix, like matrix realms are big, they're massive, they're huge. You can create, you can do all sorts of interesting things there, but you're still contained within the bubble. And, yeah, because there's you know, uh, apparently cities there, right? Yeah, modern oh, modern everything. cities. Mm. Yeah, um, there's astral realms that are kind of like a mirror of the Earth realm. So yeah. every place on Earth has like a mirror. On top of that, there's uh, all these different religious themed, like theme park. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Having theme park for the for the religious, the the uh, I don't know I don't know what happens to materialists. I, I I try to figure that out. Where what the hell do they do with them? Because they ha- can have their absolute total way with them, right? They have no uh, they, they they have no. They're totally naive. They go in there. They've convinced themselves over a lifetime that. That there's no such thing as a spirit realm. There's no such thing as an afterlife. The material universe is all there is. Matter is just an accident. Uh, I don't even think they believe in free will, right? You can't even believe in free will if you're a, mater- if you're a pure materialist, right? Absolutely. Oh, the, the hoops atoms. still jump through. Oh. Right. Yeah. So then they end up in the afterlife. What What the heck? Do they? I mean, these archontic parasites have to go, you know, look at that chump. You know, yeah, you know, like Howard Storm. I brought him up yeah. before, <laughs> right? He's the perfect example. Yeah, I mean, he's got a whole book, which if you read it with the right perspective, he is taken for the con job oh. ride in the afterlife of his, you know, existence. He, he's just they have their, they are the, they torment him in hell. Then they send them to Jesus for the big save, and then they send them back to Earth. <laughs> oh, he's totally reformed and ready to go. Yeah, and all these people that have the NDs, they're always told, like, oh, you know, don't worry, you'll be able to come back. You got to go complete your mission, but you'll be able to come back. So they even say, they give them that comfort. Don't worry, you can come back to us. We love you. We care about you, but you got to get your ass back down there. I mean, it, 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 so then they they have that amazing experience. It's all love and light or hell. And then there's some redeeming quality at the end a lot of times. But anyways, they, yeah, so they, you let, know, it's crazy. Yeah. So let's say once our lifespan's over, you end up in the astral. Now, <clears throat> I don't know that there's an immediate exit. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I would think there might be if you focus in an intent on it, but let's suppose, let's suppose there isn't, Mm -hmm. but now you're, you're privy to their scam. Maybe you have to work toward the exit or something. And then, um, it wasn't a quantum, uh, Tina and Karen, they compared it to the Truman show where you had to get to the back. (laughs) There's an exit door in the back, Mm -hmm. but you had to, you know, you had to get to the back to get out. Uh, With your sword. Simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, so you may end up in one of these astral cities. Uh, mm. Apparently, people there have jobs. Yeah, um, the horror. They, they, yeah, <laughs> they have. Uh, although it, it's described as more of like a pleasant experience, not so much. Well, that's because you, you don't have the body. You don't have yeah, the pain have the and the suffering that comes with the body. So I. That's how I look at it. I don't know. <laughs> you basically have the body that you want. You know, yeah. you, your, your appearance can be whatever you resonate or, you know. Um, it kinda, yeah, it's, it's amazing how much these movies tell us. Like mm-hmm. the, the Matrix with Keanu Reeves, how he appears when he's inside the system and how his real body appears outside. And um, so many different movies that, you know, t- talk about the... Uh, whole mindset appearance, even the wizard of Oz, right? Wizard of Oz is basically the matrix story just <laughs> from the 1930s or forties or whenever it was made. Right, right um, in plain sight. Yeah. Just uh, pulling the levers behind the curtain. Yeah. The, the uh, wizard has no actual power. Yep. The, uh, the whole thing is a scam. <laughs> 
Um, none of those, none of those figures in the Wizard of Oz actually needed any repair. They just had to realize that they were already right to begin with. Uh, then they tell Dorothy at one point, "Oh, you could have gone home anytime you wanted to." That's part. That's part of the thing. Yeah. The whole thing. She she's trapped there, and then you know. Then in the end, they tell, her, "Oh, you could have just gone home anytime you wanted to." Yeah. What and are you, you doing you know, here? We can't, we can't hold you here against your will. We've simply been tricking you through the whole movie. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so all these books, uh, from Bowman and all these other people of all these vast places in the astral, uh, it seems enormous to me. Like you could end up probably obviously mean you and other people like us are not going to end up in some hollow epic. We're not going to resonate. Hell no. We may we may end up in some kind of um, sci-fi type city or something. You know, I don't know. And then from there, you may have to figure out, okay, how do I get out of here? Mm-hmm. Where's the actual exit? Because mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I would think you have to do it pretty quick. What do you think? Because yes, I, I would think the longer you hang around, the more prone you the are. More the more comfortable you start to become. Mm-hmm. What if you uh, run across those beings you recognize, beings you've been, you know, hung out with, you know, I mean, you, you know, or there's familiar sights, feelings, communications, yeah. energies, anything and everything. That's, that's why, like, uh, you know, straight to, you know, it seems that all we really need is that intention that, that, that I'm really banking on that completely. Um, and I'm, I'm convinced that's what I'm going to be able to do is like, just set that intention to, you know, bypass and transcend this entire, the entire thing to just a pure state of existence inside, like the equivalent of my own void realm that's incapable of being. You know, I've said it yeah. a thousand times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I think it's always the end of a video game that is the hardest part mm-hmm. to to win. The boss, uh, the boss level, <laughs> the boss level, right? Mm-hmm. So the boss level in this game of life, I think, is yeah, you're going to be thrown all that stuff, it, things that you liked, things that you were attached to, people you loved, maybe your dogs, you know. Okay. And then you're going, the boss level is going to be, yeah, uh, I'm just, I have to, I I think you have to exit alone. Mm -hmm. I think the only way out, and that that makes it super hard, right? You have to say, I'm an individual, I came in alone, I'm exiting alone. Mm -hmm. There's no way to, uh, the the more you start to, I want to say interact Mm -hmm. or want to help or um, associate yourself with all the human connections you made here. The, the, I think it's possible that that is the last trap because it, 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 it it kind of locks you in and you, 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 you have to have a really strong intent mindset to not give into that. Right. Right. What do you think about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you got to you got to stand strong in your resolve. The mindset is so key. I think you know, even though time doesn't exist, we can say speed is important because I think I think we have our we have obviously our human <clears throat> form, but then there's also this astral form, and then contained within that is you know our true essence okay so there, i think there's a couple layers that that occur so i think even the shedding yeah etheric you know shedding that uh, etheric astral body uh that is probably part and parcel of coming into the system is also important uh, to to get rid of that um, you know, as strip everything and anything away down to your our purest form is uh and you know no interactions. I mean that's that seems to be the... Isn't, uh, I, I think uh although it's not perfect, uh you know, I don't agree with everything, but the the the, the, the Tibetan 
book of living and dying the the bardos uh, i think that one uh pretty much that's what it's trying to say that's what it's trying to convey you can't allow yourself to get distracted you will run into distractions on your way out yep. if you want to get out that's what they want you must yeah right. there are different levels you know in that book or so you know where they tries to put fear into you and then it tries to dump uh, love or whatever the love bomb as you call it um, you know all these different levels of, of <clears throat> distractions and then in order to ascend or escape you you must reject all of this how many sci-fi movies have involved like <laughs> how many times have we watched even the original star trek i'm sure there was more than one episode where uh you know people were trapped in some kind of oh, yeah um, loads yeah, yeah fake I mean. reality and, you know <laughs> you, and the only way out is to uh, or stargate stargate that's that's the one stargate had had several episodes where the stars had, you know, been tricked into some kind of false reality and it's designed to keep them trapped. And I'm pretty sure there was one where they were literally inside of the matrix. Mm -hmm. There's an episode of they even, don't they even call it a matrix? I think I remember what you're talking about. I think they even use the terminology matrix. Uh, they may have, they yeah. may have, they may have, uh, Ironically, in for the uh, uh, the King James version of the of the uh, <laughs> uh, of the Bible refers to the womb as a matrix. Mm. Did you know that? Uh, I remember running across it a while ago, but you, thank you for reminding me. I, I remember <laughs> reading that at some point, but I, I never really went and verified it. So it's good to hear it from oh, you. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I, I verified it. Yeah, I verified mm. all that biblical research I did. Back when I was deconstructing uh, Christianity, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, the, the word "matrix" you can find it in the original King James uh, translation of the of the the original the uh, the the, um, the actual King James version. Not the, there's several other. There's like the New King James version, and you know, there's a couple rewrites. I think to that, I yeah, that's right. I remember looking up Matrix on etymology, and that's right. It, it is, yeah, okay. Uh, late 14th century, uterus, womb, womb, uterus, and directly from Latin Matrix, pregnant animal, <laughs> and late yes. Latin womb, also source origin, source origin from mother, matter, mother. You know, right? yeah. isn't, isn't that wild? See, they... Yeah. The thing is that nothing here is actually hidden. It's hidden in plain sight. Yeah. It's, it's not, they're not, they're not really keeping it from you. They're not, you know, it's just the, what they do is they show you the, was it, what, what, what was the uh, amazing thing the other night you helped me find that one cartoon? Oh, from Rick and yeah, Morty? the Rick and Morty episode. That was nuts. I was, uh, that was... <laughs> okay, I, I had never watched the show, I knew about it, but I never watched it. Um, and, um, it was a video clip somebody used in some YouTube video, which I can never, can never remember where I saw it from. It was about, you know, the reincarnation soul trap. And in this video montage, this, whoever made it threw in that clip from Rick and Morty, which, uh, if you, if people out there are interested in if you YouTube oh, yeah. search, I um, could pop that up. Actually, I could put a link in there Rick, too. Yeah, Rick and Morty Game of Life. <laughs> that was it's only like a it's only like two minutes long. It's like a minute, what a minute and fifty yeah, seconds or sure. something. And uh it goes to the it 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 goes to the whole matrix reincarnation soul trap in like one minute fifty seconds and the kid, you know, <laughs> the, the whole life thing getting killed by in the carpet store that was hilarious <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's exact ending you'd ex we'd expect right <laughs> after all of that goes to an entire lifetime uh, and, and, and and you see how time didn't really matter where he was you know, uh, entered from yeah that was also something i caught my attention he starts playing his game of uh it had a name or whatever uh where you're playing as this character 
And then um, when he comes out of the game, it's only a few seconds later. For him. It's like no time has passed. But he's gone through an entire lifetime uh, as, as this other guy, as this human, from childhood all the way to death. I thought that was oh, kind of deep. Uh, it is, yeah. It's uh, the game of life, yeah. I, I popped up the link, so anyone interested, uh, definitely save that and give it a watch later. <laughs> I wish I could play <laughs> it right now, but we'll get hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will. We will get hit, even though mm -hmm. even though it shouldn't be because it's fair use. Yeah, yeah. I had to re I had to refresh the page. The the chat thing stopped working. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, you know what I do? I always hit. Um, cause you have top chat and live chat. Sometimes that doesn't even work, but I find if you select when you're on a live stream that you hit live chat, it, it seems to run smoother. Uh, you'll still run into issues once in a while, but they always have it set to top chat and oh, some messages oh, okay. also don't appear sometimes. So it's a little weird. I, even if you're watching the replay, my friends always make sure it's selected at live chat. Because you can miss out on a lot. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just did that. Now I fixed it. Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. It should be it on is. live chat all the time. That's that's just stupid. I agree. And and they also have it set up. This is the the other thing I learned. I don't know. Maybe a few months back, I started doing it. Like if you if you do a YouTube video, you know how there's always tons of comments missing. And, and people are like, yes. oh, I wrote this big comment, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not talking about the ones that we click and obviously YouTube deletes them. But I'm talking about yeah. the ones where, like, they just don't appear. It's the same thing. You, uh, If you're in a YouTube video, you always want to click... Uh, oh, what the heck? It's just bear with me a minute. I forgot what, exactly what it is, but... Hello, everybody. All right, if you, you click... Uh, if you're in the comment section... Of a video, it's only after. A, obviously, you can't do it on a live stream. It's after a video is streamed or been uploaded. You do the sort by newest first, because YouTube, it's the same thing in the live chat. They have it by top chat, but in a video in the comment section, it's sort by top comments and then newest first. So if you click newest first, you'll see tons of comments that you didn't even know were there. And so what That's I did true. is I set now YouTube has a feature where you can if you do an upload, it's a, of course, it's all the way at the bottom of your settings. Uh, but you and you have to do it individually every single video. You can actually default it that it's set to newest first. So then, you know, basically anyone who comes across my videos over the last few months it's automatically set that way. And I'm going to go back and, and default it for every single video. So that way, uh, all these comments are revealed that have basically been hidden. I mean, there's tons that just show up. It's crazy. And it's for any video. You can, any video you watch on YouTube, always, always, always sort by newest first. And you'll, you'll see loads more comments. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, also, um, I'm, I'm trying to scan these comments. I, and some of them are flying by so fast. I, I can barely, Jimmy's them, saving but, uh, some too. Jimmy, Jimmy's sending some over. So we'll, uh, we'll get to some of them too. If, uh, if you, if you're yeah. missing any, so like, um, okay. So, uh, one thing I want to tell people, if you go on my website, there's so many resources there. I want you to understand something just because I have linked to something or put a, book in the book list or a link in the link list that does not mean uh, and i i think people sometimes think that if you link to something <laughs> or you're putting something out there that you agree or that you think this person is you know um mostly correct or all correct they could just have a small part of a correct uh, thing when yes. you put it in the yeah. totality of everything else. So you cannot, um, I, I, as I said, I'm an individual. I do my own research and I maintain my sovereign individuality. So I am not the same as everybody else. And um, I just have collection of massive amount of information and you have to put it all together and then view it in its totality and have it, have it reveal what is consistent in it all. 
so that so that you can kind of make sense of reality. Don't think, for example, if oh, I promote this guy or uh, I link to this person and that person has ninety percent Looney Tunes <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> but maybe they have ten percent of something valuable, which uh, not too many people are saying, or I haven't come across anywhere else. You take the ten percent, you discard the ninety, and go. Yeah, on. that that's like what I, it's I, all about, man. Ah. Yeah, I mean the uh, the whole thing with the Matrix being in the King James Bible, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just one tiny thing in the big book of, of a mess of a book yeah. that uh, <laughs> is interesting. You know, the, why well, why would they use that word? Why did that word end up as the movie? the matrix, uh, you know, how did that word become womb or the entry point into this life to being, uh, associated with a false reality that you're kind of trapped with, you know, that's, you know, that doesn't mean that, uh, I think the, you know what I'm saying, Mark? You understand yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it it amazes me um because i was even getting shit yesterday for the interview i did even though you know it was very clear that you know i said look you know mary has her experiences i respect her as a being i hope she sees some of what you know, I, I talked to her about and I, I actually pointed her to you and Wayne and and to try and make some sense of things. But like the reason I had her on is because first she has some great experiences to share and her experiences show a, a lifetime of deception, period. You know, she was tapped on the shoulder to come down here and do her thing. And, and you know, she had... <laughs> dealt with absolute hell in her life and you know people are like i don't even know why i'm watching this like well it's experience it's no different than doing a commentary you know i mean it, it, it of an nd it's someone who thinks a certain way and and subscribes to a certain set of values and thoughts about what this place is and how it pertains to them and outside of here and blah 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 blah, blah. but that's it. I mean, it's just we're getting the experiencer information. And same thing, like if uh, recommending books, you recommend books. Just because a book is recommended by either of us doesn't mean that we 100% agree on every single word that's written. No, it just it's just about the again, the totality is the evidence of the evidence, as you say, you know, like that's really what it boils down to. It's like finding those nuggets. And what I think you're your book list shows and your links and your evolution is just that it shows your journey. It shows your individual journey, like you said, and that your sovereign journey to as a, for a quest for information to deconstruct, uh, you know, the existence here, uh, the realm yourself and beyond. So, sure, you know, yeah, but because... no, no, you're a shill, right, Dan? You're a shill. You know, yeah, you're a shill. <laughs> you know, because, yeah. you know, because when you when you are actually investigating something, okay, uh, and you're going to listen to witness testimony and collect evidence, it's mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely imperative to understand that people are going to communicate several different things at the same time. They're going to tell you what they saw but that's going to be, or maybe what they experienced, but that is going to be mixed with how they interpreted the experience. Yes. Their, their, exactly. their interpretation is irrelevant. It's not really relevant. It's their interpretation. Yep. Uh, what's, what is relevant is what did they actually experience? Uh, Howard Storm, that, that, that guy, mm -hmm. that's a classic example. Classic. This man had a profound he will even admit in interviews that the Christianity he was shown does not even make any sense at all. With, yep. with not. He, he, yep. he has said that several different times. Mm -hmm. like, what I experienced isn't consistent with, with the dogma and doctrines of Christianity. But, and a lot of other end years say that too. Yeah. A lot eh, of other ones. Eh. So you have, they have a religious specific type of experience, right? They meet the religious beings that they believed in. 
they get an experience, but doesn't even jive with the doctrines <laughs> and God, yeah, yeah. right? Now yeah. they have to try to make the red, the round peg fit in the square hole. They got to bash it in there with a hammer. And then they got to tell themselves that makes total sense. Love it, Dan. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you're collecting the, the information, uh, they got their own uh, brainwashing that they're dealing with. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the brainwashing that we have to deal with. We all get all this garbage in garbage out information that you grow up with. You have to struggle against that. You have your cognitive dissonance that you have to be aware of. And then, um, and then you have to try to process all this through this garbage English language and still have it make sense somehow. It, it's very hard. It's very difficult to, to do all that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's easy to get caught up in, and, uh, oh, uh, they mentioned something that I that disagree I, uh, with. Yeah. Disagree with that way. The, the whole thing is trash. Yeah. You can't do uh, that if uh, you're actually investigating something. Uh, you have to have uh, this ability to separate uh, interpretations yeah. from what did they actually experience. Even yeah. even like somebody like William Bull, who mm -hmm. I think you mentioned. You think he's on to the whole. I, yeah, I'm you know, convinced of it. Yeah. Convinced. But of he it. has a yeah. he has a business and a person exactly. and kind of like a um he's gotta make a living. Uh, he's got a co content that he's attached himself mm -hmm. to. And he, he can't even though he kind of like I yeah, I agree with you. Some of his interview uh, presentations lead me to believe the guy knows more than Mm -hmm. He packages it in a very soft way. Yes. Very gentle. Uh, he's not going to ruffle any feathers no. with the way he's packaging yeah. it. And he was a student of Monroe. I mean, all these people who are students of Monroe, it's like, oh, we'll just skip the whole section about Lush and I mean, all that. And it, come on. Come, what is this sure. blackout with all these Monroe instructors and Lush? Come on. None of them will talk yeah. about it. None of them. None of them. None of them will talk about it. Even Monroe, you know, disappointingly. Yeah, after two weeks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, I went into a deep, dark depression for two weeks, <laughs> and then I just, now it's all about love. Oh, the all about love. <laughs> now, do I, do I trash Robert no. Monroe because no. he does? No, yeah. no, yeah. no, he has a lot of valuable information. Yeah. There's three book volumes. There's mm -hmm. tons of information there. It's also... 50% is interpretation of the information. Exactly. If you just take the, what did, what did you, what did he observe mm -hmm. without the interpretation? You get a nice clean picture that you can make match all these other people's, you know, the, the thing is that even in, with the astral realm, you can, like I said, you can go back to the 1920s, read books from back then, read books from today. Mm -hmm. And if you remove the interpretation and just take, what are they telling you? You get the same picture of the astral. Yes. Yeah. Virtually the same yep. exact picture. You of the see astral. the patterns. Yep. The patterns right. pop up time and time again. Yep. Yeah. You, you can, you can read CW lead better. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if I'm for, am I pronouncing yeah, that? Or right? lead beater, yeah. some people lead better, lead yeah. beater, whatever. Yeah. If you if you read C. W. Ledbetter, you can you, you know his books about the astral realm. Um, it's going to be a lot of interesting information, but also his interpretation of what they tell you about it, what it what they say it means. Um, forget about that part. You don't know. We don't know that. Nobody. We just. But we do know that the, the information about the astral and the, the immediate spirit realm beyond earth is consistent. It seems to constantly repeat itself. Uh, you know, all the information since Raymond Moody uh, about uh, near death experiences, you can look at thousands and thousands of things and they all, all these people have their own um, biases and premises that they inject into the uh, endless, this month. endless, endless, but at the end of it all, when you strip that away or you, you're able to like filter that out, you get the same exact picture of what's going on. Love it, Dan. Same picture. Love it. 100% on board. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, That's the way it is. Yeah, so, yep. 
Yeah. And people get caught up in, in, in this speed bump or that. I mean, the comments, I don't really get involved in the comment section mm-hmm. anymore. I, I, uh, it, it, it's, it's just too many of them and they, um, in my videos and and they're all over the place. And I'm like, you know, I just, I, I keep telling people, I mean, videos have I said, you got to look at the totality of the information. Yeah. You have to process it and be aware of your cognitive dissonance and all the other premises that you're told that have to be true. And you tell to yourself, but well, my premises that I'm told have to be true may not be true. Some of them may be wrong. So. Yeah. That's something that, to- Neither of us, Wayne, nobody claims to have all the answers. All we know is that, you know, we're being taken for a major ride here. (laughs) And something isn't matching up. And it doesn't match up with what's being represented in the astral with NDEs and and all these, all the other pre-birth memory, all these, the past life regression, all these different things just do not coincide with what is happening here. Like, the, the, you know, it. love and light. Well, where yeah. the fuck is the I, love and light? You know, let's just exactly. start with the human body. Let's just start with the what, very basics. You know, come what, on. What kind of uh, empathetic, benevolent <laughs> All loving. Being, what kind of... Would would you... Would anybody that, you know, has empathy make a system like this? Oh, God. I mean, no way, no way. Mm-hmm. Can you, you, you have to be totally delusional to think that this system is made by some all loving, all knowing <laughs> being. Fucking ridiculous and crazy. There's a question I caught um, from uh, Miles. Uh, do you think they have time travel? Okay. Um, well, I don't know what that, what, what he means by that exactly. Uh, I would assume he's talking about the archontic parasites. Uh, uh, see, well, you I, don't really understand how time works. To begin oh, with. I know that's. Uh, a, I, yeah. I, how do you, how do you know that your next lifetime um, is in uh, order? How do we is in order? Uh, how do we know? We don't know if there's uh, no linear time it, it, when you're outside the system. When you're inside the material realm, could you have could could I be remembering my next lifetime that was is in my present past, but is actually in my spiritual future? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't even, obviously we don't understand how time works. And proof of that is from that disastrous time travel formula they used in the Marvel uh, Endgame game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Which, this one, man. Huh? To, to this day, uh, I cannot, make sense of that whatever they did there you know mm-hmm. uh the chaotic time travel rules they came up for that mm-hmm. um i don't know so crazy crazy man <laughs> it's just a, it's a clown world out there and a clown world in the astral seemingly uh yeah i mean just the fact that there are these designated realms for you know, religious belief systems. How is that not a red flag? You know, how, how, how is it not a red flag that people have these NDEs or whatever, you know, experience they may have where they have a belief based experience that is customized to them. And then they have beings chirping in their ears, telling them to do this, telling them to do that. Come on. It's so blatant. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Was it, uh, was I watching something, uh, one of your videos where you're interviewing some, somebody that was um, talking, I think about a DMT experience where entities tell you to do something and then you go off and they do it right away without considering that whatever they're being told to do is, going to be bad for them i think it was <laughs> it could your, have been could have been oakley it could have been an interview yeah. with oakley yeah N- N- no. yeah, yeah. yeah 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 yes that's it, exactly you you have you have all these um um yeah the, these external forces or entities trying to you know talk to you do this tell you do that uh 
trying to inspire you in this direction, that direction, not all of those things are beneficial or in your interest. And meanwhile, you do have this inner voice that kind of guides you and tells you, no, that's bad. Yep. Yeah. I don't want to listen to that. And, but a lot of people don't listen to that inner voice. That is they a huge listen. issue. Yeah. <laughs> Huge issue. Listen. That yeah. is that is your true self that is contained warning. in the avatar yeah. telling you warning, danger. Yeah. Well, those into you know, how many people have said that even on, in earthly exchanges, that they meet somebody and that person gave them like a bad feeling yeah. or something. Yeah, and bad it turns vibe. out the person bad vibe and it turns out the person was actually evil yeah i had really ill intent and yeah. uh if, if they just listened to themselves they would have never mm-hmm. never been in that scenario in that yeah i mean even yeah. just uh basic things like someone takes uh I talked about this not that long ago how you know someone takes the same uh ride into work day after day week after week year after year but one day something inside them says i better take this other way to work and then come to find out you know they check out later on the news or in the paper the next day if papers exist and you know and they find out that you know there was like this massive you know fatality involving a bunch of cars or like you know a building exploded or or something huge happened where they normally would have been driving through at that very moment on the way to work I mean that those are that, that happens all the time to people. That's just one little thing. Or they get, you know, a premonition that you know their son or their daughter uh, is going to be in trouble shortly, and maybe they warn them and say, you know, don't go out tonight, son. Don't go out tonight, daughter. You know, and yeah. they have d- divert a disaster. You know, that's the little yeah. voice. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had that experience numerous times, and, and just odd mm-hmm. events, uh, you know. But it, it doesn't it seem. Um, I think I would mention to you this the other night. That it almost seems like some of these synchronicities are like uh, glitching lately. That they're falling apart. That there's. Uh, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, I don't know if the if the matrix is overloaded. Yes. Um, and and that's why certain things. You know, and uh, current events have been happening, which seems to be designed to slim down the matrix, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, when we were at dinner the other night and you brought that up, I thought that was a, a great, great point. Because maybe, like you said, it's just like it's overloaded. There's so many here that, you know, like you, like we were talking about, like, uh, you know, the, the processor, the RAM is like overloaded. And so more glitches happen as a result of it. More crazy, like it, 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 you know, runs haywire because it's oh, the system's overloaded. I think that is a very possible explanation for it i i blew me away when you mentioned it like that because i was just like is it all supposed to be on purpose because some of it seems like it's totally on purpose but then like when you put it like that it you know that could explain a lot of it i I don't know it's it's i loved it love it but yeah because i mean uh, as somebody who's really one of my hobbies is you know computers and technology software uh, anybody out there that knows a lot about computers knows that uh, there's a lot of time and effort spent in, in computer uh, operating systems and software engineering trying to create what they call pseudo randomness because mm-hmm. they can't they cannot create actual randomness mm-hmm. and uh, this uh, pseudo randomness can run into problems if you, you know you have buffer overflows and mm-hmm. uh, other other mayhem that happens uh in, in some kind of glitch in a program and then the the thing just runs wild i mean it was weird right we were uh, i i grabbed a t-shirt supposedly at random it turns out that it was a t-shirt that i got in Clearwater when i was up there doing the jeff doherty presentation and it was from a restaurant called the raven which <laughs> yeah, that is was a, crazy too yeah yeah right so i, gra- I grab a t-shirt i'm thinking at random, I just reached <laughs> in the t-shirt pile, pulled it out. It has the Raven restaurant on there. So it's got the Edgar Allan Poe thing on the back and the front. It says the Raven Clearwater. 
And then you hand me a book, <laughs> which I randomly page through I and end it. up yeah. on, yeah, I end up on the Raven. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm wearing the shirt and I'm like, wow, that is, you know, and, and, but it was, ha- it happens. These things have been happening more frequently. I agree. Like there used to be, and now it seems like it's almost running amok. Like all the time. Uh, it, yeah. it can't, it can't, uh, randomize shit mm-hmm. anymore. So everything seems to kind of connect together. Yeah. Um, and then the waitress, like, uh, then the waitress, <laughs> right. The waitress. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, and it was like, holy yeah. crap, how, how yeah. is that possible? Yeah. That you have the waitress connects yeah. to the book, connects <laughs> to my T-shirt, and it's all compounding one after the other. Oh, and geez. it's like, wow, see, that's just, yeah. to me, that, that's like a glitching, overloaded uh, program, running amok. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think you're onto something there. I really do. Like that really that made the most sense because even though we you know there does seem to be this system that's always or these uh necessary systems that have always been in place that have to tell us the truth. Like, you know, like we were talking about Wizard of Oz, you know, like and we can go back way further than that. There's always these <coughs> these things these big, big system truths that come out and that really just throw it in our face. But now more than ever, it's just nonstop, nonstop. Uh, All the movies, all the video games, all the TV shows, uh, all the weird glitches and and, um, odd experiences, the synchronicities, all these things, just like on, on crack, you know, it's just crazy. And I used to think, see, this was my logic when I when I looked back at it and during, you know, as an awakened being, I guess you could say. Looking back on it, I used to say, okay, well, I was still, a, I was like dead asleep, you know, so I wasn't really functioning uh, and questioning the the realm and the reality and my, you know, existence as thoroughly as I am now. So how can I compare it to, you know, my asleep state compared to, let's say, you know, now? Like, so that was always my rationale for it. Like, you know, asking you shall receive, you know, continue to to prod this reality and ask these questions, then it opens itself up to you. But not only until you do that, but, you know, that that kind of starts to fly out the window when you see with how much intensity and, and obviousness that this reality is kind of shared with us. So what do you think about yeah. that? Uh, you know, one of the other things that gamers have done, and, and when I used to game on PC, something I've done, uh, gamers out there will know it, getting into the secret control panel and turning on God mode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I, I have to wonder, you know, how hackable is this reality? Uh, you, we do know that we've had stories I think Dean Radin is an, a researcher, a scientist yep. that has written a lot of books about supernatural, uh, real ma- you know, real magic stuff like that. And of course, uh, I've had inter- uh, interaction and discussions with uh, the occultist uh, Sophia Di Gregorio, which I mentioned many times on my website. She's an interesting. She's a solitary practitioner, very individualized, which is why I wanted to talk to her because she wasn't trapped in some kind of group culture, collective thinking. She sure. does her all, all her own private thinking. But when, when you're thinking about um, <clears throat> this reality, uh, at one point, you know, did, do, did some people in the past accidentally end up with like basically what you would call superpowers? Is there a way, uh, and what would happen? What would, what would the matrix do? How long would it let you get carried away in that if you're if you're essentially cheating in the game, would you would you be able to turn on telekinesis, uh, teleportation, mm-hmm. um, uh, other things that you w- we would consider superpowers? You know the the entertainment industry, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DCU uh, comic books in general, always have stories of the hero's journey, oh, yeah. uh, a Animal. person obtaining superpowers. 
and then what they can do with those powers. Yeah. Um, would there be some kind of balance? Would there, would there have to be something come up that would counter you so that you would have like, you know, what would, would, what would that, what would happen if you were able to hack the system and uh, you know, sort of like mess up the matrix from the inside? I don't know. Just gonna, mm. ever, have you ever thought of that? Yeah, Mark? no, I, I have. And it, see, like I kind of, I kind of look at it as, um, I look at those types of movies in two different ways. One could be that, you know, it's a representation of the astral. But then I also feel that uh, a lot of it could be a representation of past um, simulations, I guess we can call it, in this matrix where, you know, uh, you know, I like to kind of always revert back to... Um, things like Egypt and India, where, you know, we see these, uh, China, where we see all these different type of depicted beings where they're basically trans species, transhumanist type looking beings. And they have, you know, they're, they're put on a pedestal. Like they're able to do things that the normal quote unquote, normal, uh, lower class human or being can't do. And so it makes me wonder, like, are we just kind of running through the motions all over again? I mean, transhumanism is on its way, trans species is, you know, all this stuff. Uh, the AI um, and integration with all this technology is just seems like, seems like we've done it before. But yeah, who is going to have the upper hand, you know? Not us. No, no. not like Atlantis. We don't know much about yeah. Atlantis. Yeah. Uh, we do. We're pretty, I'm pretty sure it was a real place, and that Plato got his information from somebody that knew something about it. Uh, but the uh, uh, sure, like the uh, 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 thing that the quantum Tina and Karen uh, healers were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, that were were compounding the problem, also because of the technology. Oh yeah. Because we're making a matrix inside of a matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're building what they virtual yeah. world, virtual worlds inside of our already fake holographic existence. And now we're like in another layer. Yeah, <laughs> that's the sick it. part, man. That's a, that's a, right? they're going to put that. A di I mean, as if the veil of forgetfulness wasn't already strong enough, as if this whole freak show wasn't already powerful enough. It, it shows just how diabolical it is and just how sick and twisted the uh, root of the system comes from. Because, you know, uh, regardless of, you know, all these clowns out there that promote this stuff, all these tech idiots and and everything, they're, they're getting it from somewhere else. I don't care. This is all stuff that's been passed down and gone through the motions and, and tested and retested and tripled quadruple tested to make sure that it is going to run the way they want it and it just doesn't feel doesn't seem like it's new i mean because of again all all that stuff that we see all those paintings all the 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 um the the sculptures the 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 hieroglyphics uh excuse me um all those things are just seem to to point that we've been through this before and i just i don't know it's just and then they want to you know basically plop us with another layer of another veil of forgetfulness over us uh, fuck that they're out of their minds not gonna happen <laughs> not gonna happen so uh, yeah. i see a comment yeah, it's plain as day to see. And then, and then the other thing uh, I brought up was uh, really quickly. The, um, do you see the do, hmm? do you see the demiurge punk comment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they come out with the cameras from behind the bush and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but the the yes. whole thing with uh, the Department of Defense, and this was like again, don't quote me on this. I think it was two thousand nine. It could have been two thousand six, but I think it was, I think it was two thousand nine. They came out and admitted that they were working on creating an alternate 
parallel reality to Earth. You know, as yeah, a, as a safe already, zone. Yeah, which may be already a parallel yeah. reality to to like the real uh, what's beyond the astral, and you know, and perhaps a. Can you imagine if we lived in a world that had that that lived up to its full potential? Oh. I mean, considering what considering what humans are capable, are capable yeah. of when when we're being productive and and thoughtful and empathetic, what, a world where uh, everybody has uh, an understanding of natural law and. Uh, the very simple rules that are right and wrong, which uh, good and evil, which it are not, and don't need to be all complicated, which in this world, they disguise the simple in complexity. And then they tell you, they can give you the complex simply, and then they never deliver. Yeah. Right. Isn't that what every world leader and, and le- uh, stifle control, stifle right? everything. they take, they take the, they take the simplest thing, and turn it into a voluminous book. How many pages does it really take to describe theft? Yeah. <laughs> right? How many? But if you go to a law book, it's a chapter after chapter after they've taken something simple as theft and turned it into something complex. So you gotta read all these rules, all these variables. And then they tell you that, oh, we can simply give you this. You just let us control everything, and we'll simply give you whatever it is yeah. they're going to promise you, oh, yeah. which is very complicated. They'll tell you they're going to simply give it to you. They never give you what they promise you, and they take the simple and turn it into a bureaucratic disaster where you, you, to get something simple done, you, 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 you end up. And, and isn't that... And, then, and, then, and so the Earth controllers are parasites, right? And they mimic the archontic ones in the spirit realm, yep. which yep. All, all of them suck off of us. Yep. And, and, live, and they live off of all of our hard work. They and, steal um, everything and stifle. Yeah, they, you can't, yeah, they stifle, they steal. That's the system where yep. you can, you're, you're, you see it represented in the physical, and people tolerate all of this psychopathic behavior mm-hmm. and uh, think that if they continue to, you know, play like tennis between this side and that side, <laughs> this side and that side, uh, that it's going to actually make a difference. Mm-hmm. And nothing ever changes except for the way a friend of mine had a great uh, analogy about how the system works. They make you think, it, it, he said it works like a sailboat. He mm-hmm. said, the sailboat is going in a direction, but in order to get that way, they have to tack to the left and they have to tack to the right. Now, if you're on the boat and you really like going to the left, then you're really happy when the boat goes to the left. And if you're on the right, you're really happy when it goes to the right. But in fact, the boat is actually just going to a certain destination. It's simply tacking left and tacking right. And it's actually going in a straight line, in a zigzag pattern. To you, you think you're winning or you're losing. You're winning, you're losing. None of that. None of that, they, none of that is actually happening. Um, they love dividing people here into two groups. They love giving you two choices, and they love making you think that you have no other alternatives. Uh, right, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. That it's always uh, the choices are always uh, in their court. Uh, they're always going to funnel back to their options that they've been given. And if there's any, any, like for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say that there is a um, group of um, phony truthers out there that are linked to the system and they are doing a little tour around florida and oh, really? oh yeah yeah I'll, I'll send you the information i'm so removed from watching regular news I no movies. no yeah no i only found i found out about it through someone else and i was like oh boy and um and it clearly i mean all of these opposition movements like the stupid trucker thing all right people buy into that okay 
they they are not going to have those types of movements out there for everyone to see and be spread far and wide week in and week out unless there is a reason for it you know unless there's a particular reason for you know like it's it's false hope like the whole trucker thing that's all false hope it's like oh yeah go truckers go truckers meanwhile your food prices are going up and up and up and up gas prices going up and up the whole stupid thing in ukraine on and on and on all bullshit um and they and they have all their men and men and women are at the top they have everybody situated in those movements those movements are not allowed to happen unless the system sanctions it period it's known history that's the other thing that's so frustrating none of this stuff is hidden because you can look through the history and find out that they, 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 use, they use the same tactics over and over again. And then they admit that they use those tactics. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a secret. <laughs> it, that's the thing that's so frustrating. None of this stuff is secret. That's why it's so frustrating when I'm, when I'm dealing with some person at, at work or whatever, and they are clueless. They're just clueless like a zombie. I'm like, holy crap, how do they even... You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's so far. That's why, yeah, we got to get out of here when this is over. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Like, the, like the, the one reason I try and do so many videos is because I, I do feel that there will come a time in the near future where, where Internet is, I mean, we could, we've already seen it, where things are just, you know, f- free dumbs and censorship are just totally run everything's running rampant and it just seems like it's at this escalated pace so the the way i kind of look at this and the reason why i put so much time in here is because who knows what tomorrow will bring uh we know that they've done you know well just to be careful on this one we know that they've done drills like mm-hmm. they did a, cu- a few years back related to this whole thing we've experienced for the internet. Yeah. We gotta, wait, isn't it something, Mark? We got to talk like I mobsters know. From, the, from the 1980s. Hey, yeah, you the thing with the thing? Yeah, get the thing <laughs> and go over and see the guy about the thing and then take care of the other thing. <laughs> Every, everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. But the, Why can't but we just say it? Not, yeah, because we're being monitored. Yeah. That's uh, In the beginning of this interview today, I remember I told you about the Running Man movie? Yeah. Okay, let me just give you a quick rundown of the, of the plot highlights. Sure. It's 2017 in the movie. The movie was made in 1987. 1987 is when the movie came out. So they probably filmed it in 86, 2017. The movie starts off with a um, text on the screen to give you like a setup. It's 2017, financial collapse, uh, food shortages. Um, the government is, is highly, become highly uh, controlling. Uh, information is censored. Um, uh, uh, people are distracted. Get this, get this with reality shows. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Keep in mind, this is, this is wow. a film made in 86. Wow. The highest rated reality show, which, uh, Richard Dawson is the, uh, host of yeah. in the movie. He plays this character, Damon Killian. Um, is the running men where they take prisoners uh, that have committed heinous acts against the state or otherwise considered to be heinous criminals. And they put them in this running man competition. If they make it out alive at the end, they get a pardon. <laughs> uh, they have these uh, really elab- elaborate uh, um, sort of gladiator types. And think about some of the reality shows where we actually have gladiators. Now. You know, they have these right up there. Up. Uh, right. And then, um, they, uh, they have these cool names and personas and they, they chase down the people in the running man and try to kill them before they escape. And of course the whole thing about them being pardoned at the end is a lie. You find out, you know, 
I mean, there's some spoilers here I'm giving away. But nah, go nobody for gets, it. No, nobody, nobody's supposed to get out of this game alive, even if they tell you otherwise. <laughs> and they use deep fake video oh technology God. to Damn. make it seem uh, when they want to create a fake news story or they alter an event for the public's consumption. Wow. That is the running wow. man. 1987 movie. I watched it last night. I was like, I remember watching it in the theater when it came out Wow! and you know, in the eighties, it was just like, uh, you know, that's incredible. Everything. Yeah. I didn't know none of the, none of the <laughs> that. Yeah. That is, it's about an hour and a half long. It's not too long. Um, there is, uh, clearly I was like, wow, did they mm. nail this or what? I mean, it's eighties movie done with eighties style. At least the music was better back then. At least that. Makes <laughs> sense. But, but the uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, has one a one liner after another one liner after another one liner. Like when he's about to set a guy on fire that was uh, trying to kill him with a flamethrower, and he and he tosses a uh, flare into the fuel <laughs> pile, and then uh, he says, "Hey." I buy the light. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's just one, one thing says, after another. He even says, I'll be back. <laughs> in the- what? Yeah. Before, before the Terminator. Well, this movies? is after Terminator. And it was clearly a reference to Terminator. Oh, oh, okay. Where he tells, he retells Richard Dawson right before he gets injected into the game. <laughs> uh, I'll be back. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then Richard Dawson leans forward and he goes, only the rerun. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, <laughs> uh, right? That's just a clown show. I, I did honestly. I didn't know there were references to to that many things in a movie. The 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 one I always kind of. The crazy one for me, just because it was my like uh, the you know how old I was. I was in high school when Truman Show came out, and I saw it in the theater. And I was like, I don't know what it is about this back then. I'm like, well, I don't know what the hell it is about this movie that makes me connect with it so much, but it does. But here you are saying like there was this whole reality TV, all deep fakes. I mean, everything is in that movie. What even like what eleven years earlier, ten years, fifteen years earlier, whatever it is. That's oh, crazy. 1987 movie, and it has it even ha- even tells you the state controls the media. Wow! In this movie, and the media is complete. I mean, the, it, even the the amount of like fake news propaganda that people aren't aware of, but you are because you're the viewer of the movie, uh, is uh, mind blowing. Mind blowing. Well, you go watch it, Mark. I you, will. You, I've added <laughs> it to my it. list. Yeah. You'll be blown away. Yeah. Uh, you're like, wow. They they even got the year almost right, 2017. You know, it was it's very close. Wow. Um, wow. Clearly, the movie also depicts two extreme classes: uh, the general population, which has been reduced to a extreme poverty and displacement, and then uh, from all the inflation. And everything, and then the uh, elites at the top, all all in this one movie. Crazy. Uh, I was yeah. talking to um, my girlfriend the other day. We were taking a hike um, in the woods, and there, uh, the whole thing. And another one that's interesting is the whole Trump thing, um, with all the predictive programming with him. And uh, one that's like blue. Well, there's a few that blew me away. There are those books that you may have heard of. Um, the Adventures of Baron Trump and his dog something. And then there's a, there's a few other ones. And those were from the, I don't know what it was like, early 1900s or late 1890s, something. I think early 1900s. Don't quote me on that one either. But anyways, there was also... Um, you know, you grew up in the Northeast, so you you remember that. Uh, you may remember that uh, hotel heiress uh, Helmsley, I think her name was. Uh, yes, I can't remember her first name, but okay. So she yeah, she had owned all those hotels, 
And she's the she's the one that left all her money to her dog <laughs> in her will. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I remember that. something like that. Okay, and so there is a comic that was put out, um, and I want to say it was in the '90s about how Trump and Helmsley wanted to build a wall, and you know they had their limos and like they, they you know, and the whole wall narrative is there. And I found that one interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's just all there, all freaking there. You can download the comic. I know, I don't know where it is, but uh, it it was floating around a bunch of places, but I'm pretty sure you can find it on archive.org. And, you know, shout out to that site. I'm sure you've lived on that site like I have, man. There's so many things I found on there. Oh, that site, it's, it's, and, you know, nothing has changed. They have, you know, they've everything that's been posted there stays there. It's one of those sites that has not been hit yet. And thank, thank you for that. Oh, what a great site. That's true. It is a fantastic site. I mean, you can find all those things that were removed here at some point. You'll find them all over there. Yeah. Everything. warehouse of the internet <laughs> yeah it is yeah and then the way back machine uh, being able to to yeah. tap into all those old sites that you know are yeah. no longer around then all of a sudden oh there's all this information you know it's great yeah. uh mark i'm gonna have to uh end this pretty yeah soon, we've been uh, going for a yeah. while yeah yeah um yeah so uh, would you like to get together again soon of and, course uh, Pick it up from here. Absolutely. We had a great talk today. Uh, I hope everybody out there that listened uh, got something out of this. And uh, I'm sure they did. You know. I'm sure they did. Do you have uh, Do you have time for a couple questions, or you, you got to get going? I, I don't want to. Whatever you got to um, do. We could always save the questions I, 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 for another time. I can do a couple. Okay. Just a couple right. questions. Okay. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, question from Illusion of Reality. Dan, has time sped up drastically for you? Um, sometimes it seems like things like, like, wow, I wake up and another year's gone by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. And in some ways. Okay. Okay. Um, question from Nebe- Nebeze. I'm sorry. I always butcher your username. I apologize. Question. Don't they dead people don't the dead people in the astral question their fa- who their fa- where their family is do they remember they left them on earth how about kids that die so do the dead people in the astral question where their family is do they remember they left them on earth how about kids that die well um it's weird uh, there's a, it's an elaborate system the yeah. astral plane and there's even a, a, a i've read this several places where People are being, I guess you could still say, they retain their human form and they live in the astral plane. There are people there that don't believe the material world exists. <laughs> Have you read that, Mark? Yeah. Have you oh, read yeah. That? I've run across I've that. I've read yeah. that several, several different cases where people, have, you know, out of body experiences interact with people from the astral where they, they think that we don't exist. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, they can't fathom it, or it's like a, a shielding over them, or a veil, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so maybe if they're that's in a holding possible, tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if that's possible, uh, then who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess. Uh, but of course, uh, if you know or remember your family, then you would know where they're at, whether they're there with you or they're still on Earth. Um, you know, mm-hmm. because they haven't died here yet mm-hmm. and transitioned there. Um, um, I don't know what happens with people that leave finally, and mm-hmm. I guess their family eventually forgets them. I'm sure they use the veil of forgetfulness and kind of, you know, when they go through those soul pods and the school mm-hmm. schools, Ugh. schools, soul you know, schools. and then they, they kind of give you a whole new, uh, maybe in put somebody new into your soul pod, mm-hmm. you know, and go on and on and on oh, with that nonsense. Uh, yeah. um, right, I'll take one, one more question. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, Ella Feria says, question, to, do you know Mark Christopher? He seems to be pretty honest about the system, but is he real? Do you know Mark? I've never heard yeah, of I don't, don't think know. I have either. 
Uh, well, Alfaria, if you're in the Discord, feel free to DM me uh, some links. We'd love to have you on there. I'm not sure if you're in there or not, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I get okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm sorry for the questions we weren't able to get to, and I will try to save them here for next time. And if you, uh, want, mm -hmm. if you want next time, we could just do questions. Yeah. And then take live questions. Yeah, that's not and, a bad uh, we'll idea. Just do a bunch of questions. Yeah, we can yeah. even we can even do like a panel or something. Yeah, that might be All right, great. something like that. That's great. All right, Dan, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit with us today, and thank you, brother. It's uh, right. been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you too. I'll take see care, you next time. Bye bye. All right, so that was Dan from Overwatch Project, Overwatch Channel. And uh, just so you guys know, all his links are in the description tab. And you can um, find him all over. He's on Odyssey. He's here on YouTube. Doesn't upload as much on YouTube. He's on BitChute. Um, and a bunch of other places. So check out the description tab. It's been... Uh, a real pleasure having him on tonight again, and uh, I respect Dan greatly for the amount of effort he's put in to help expose this. And, uh, you know, I apologize for not being able to get to the questions earlier. I didn't even realize <laughs> time flies when you're talking about this stuff. So uh, I will try and save them. Anyone out there who did post a question, uh, again, I will try and save them, but Knowing me, there's a chance that I'll forget to to bring them up at some point. Even I'll put a notepad uh, memo aside. But, you know, if save your questions if I didn't get to them. And when we do do a, uh, a discussion Q&A with Dan, we'll get to uh, yours first. So, again, um, thank you, everyone. If you don't mind hitting the like button on your way out, that would be great because I heard it does help get the channel into more people's feeds. And someone actually said they found the channel on the homepage of YouTube or the home section or recommended. I mean, this channel does not get recommended uh, very rarely, um, even when I look at the YouTube statistics, um, it just doesn't happen. It's uh, everything seems to be mostly word of mouth. So, you know, even sharing the link out there, sharing, you know, what you know about the soul trap, uh, sharing Dan's channel, Wayne's website, uh, my, my channel be most appreciated, and, uh, you know, everyone, I think, also out there who, you know, truly um, gets the, the bigger picture on this or like, you know, some are still on the fence. Everyone has to take their journey and get here when they get here. Um, but that's all right. I mean, that that's what it's all about. It's all about taking that journey and seeing it for yourself, because remember, nobody needs my channel, Dan's channel or Wayne's website. All the information is out there and everyone can do their own research. That's the beauty of this is that you don't need anything. You can just see it for yourself, but there's good stepping stones here. And there's also, um, and in Dan, on Dan's channel and Wayne's website, but there's also a really awesome community aspect to this. And, uh, I want to, uh, invite everyone here to the discord. Thank you, Jimmy. You, you read my mind. Um, invite everyone to the Discord if you'd like to come um, come onto the server and chat with us after the show. I may pop in for a little while, but um, last night we had uh, there was conversation going most of the night. I fell asleep on the thing, but um, but yeah, feel free to come and join us after the show in the general voice chat of the server. There's a Discord uh, invite link right there by JSR. That's Jimmy, by the way. He just changed his channel name. So that's Jimmy. And I want to thank you, Jimmy, so much for your help tonight. That was, um, as always, brother, very much appreciated. And um, everyone out there who's stayed and 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 watched tonight and, and been part of all, all these... I mean, there's so many smart people out there. You guys, the amount of information being shared and, and it's just endless. And uh, I do apologize if I can't get back to each and every one of you. Um, it's just um, with the way things have 
kind of grown here, it's become pretty close to impossible. I'd have no life <laughs> responding to everything. So the best uh, place to really find me is in Discord, and, and I prefer to talk in voice chat whenever I can um, instead of typing everything out all the time. So, um, but... You know, there's a lot of you out there who, you know, know this stuff inside and out, too. And, you know, we can all help each other, too. So if anyone you find someone that maybe is struggling or having a problem, um, you know, because it, it is kind of a shock when you come across this information. It's not easy. Um, but remember, you have the power within you as a true creator being reclaiming your spirit essence. You're the real you. And when natural death occurs, you'll be all right. Just stand strong. You are your own director in all of this. You have your own path and nothing is going to stand in your way. So stand strong and, you know, believe in yourself. Not, I, I hate even saying believing, but no, inner, no deep, deep within you that this, that you're going to be okay. And the reason why I say like the whole information here is important to, to learn and, and absorb is because what will happen is, is you'll go from saying, hmm, you know, maybe this old trap thing is happening. Maybe this whole system is, you know, a deception and crazy and blah, blah. But then you'll kind of reach a point. That's what happened with me. I reached a tipping point where I said, I cannot deny it anymore. And then what it happened was, is I became self-empowered. I believed in myself more than anything. And I, and now it's, it's just firm. Like we were talking about earlier with Dan, it's just not possible. Nothing is going to mess with me. Nothing's going to mess with you. We all have our own power to say no. We have our own power to direct our intention properly so that our consent can't be weaseled out of us or misinterpreted or ended up back in this whole mess. So that's um, the end of my <laughs> soapbox ending. And again, Dan, if you're still listening, thank you so much, brother. It's It's been a pleasure. Um, and I, before we close out, I just want to give a shout out to... Uh, oh, where is it? Okay, to uh, some of the new members that have come around, uh, drones and other. I just became a member of the Last Timers Club. Mike Alien became a member of the Last Timers Club. Ouch, C4, 33rd Traveler. Toe Jam and Earth, and uh, everyone else. Uh, Hail, Hail Susie at, at Ema, and everyone else out there who has uh, members. Thank you so much. Can't go through the whole list, but I just want to let you know you're very much appreciated. And thank you everyone for the super chats and stream elements donations throughout the show, uh, past and present. Very much appreciated, and uh, I thank you again for all watching and we'll see y'all again real soon much love and blessings no be blessings how about just we'll just leave it at much love <laughs> i'll see you in the discord if you want to join us